How's it going everybody? Welcome back to our NSXT series where we're building out the data center portion of our lab. In this video we're going to be taking a look at deploying a data uh, vCenter server and getting that up and running. We're not going to go through the process of actually onboarding anything to vCenter right now. We're going to focus on at least the deployment piece to it and all the details that go along with that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our RDP session. I've already copied over the the files that needed. I've copied the VCSA over from my local drive to my jump box, so we're able to go ahead and start working with it. I'm going to actually go ahead and um, go through the beginning process of this. Now, just to, for clarity's sake, this jump box has connectivity into all of these hosts. Now, what I've done is this jump box has the the adapters attached to it so I can talk so from a networking perspective the let me go ahead and zoom in here on this guy this guy right here the network adapter VM Nick zero for management is going to be connected to um, be the vCenter server instance attached to the lab port group but we're going to be deploying it from this jump box but installing it on the underlying host, just like we did with the storage appliance and then all the ESXi hosts. But the network adapters are going to be the key piece here, and that's where we're going to be putting all of our connectivity is it's going to be the, the, the lab port group. So with that being said, let me go ahead and pull up my documents, double click here. I'm going to go to the UI installer, Win32, and scroll down to the installer. I'm going to double click on this guy. And then after a couple of minutes, we should get a dialog and installer app. So I'm going to go ahead and click on install. We're going to there's two stages of deploying the appliance and setting up the appliance. I'm going to walk you through all those details. I'm going to go back over here to the tools and DNS. and make sure I add the appropriate IP address here for this guy. And the IP address here is going to be 172.31.110. So I'm going to right click here, new host, it's going to be dc1-vcsa and it's going to be 172.31.1.10. I'm going to click on add host because you need a DNS entry when you go to do any of this stuff. Close this out, go back over here to our installer I'm going to accept the license terms. We're going to embed, deploy a vCenter server with an embedded pro platform services controller. The IP address of the device we're going to be connecting it to. So where are we installing the appliance? So we're going to have 10.255.1.100. And then we're going to type in root and then the password of password. Just like that. We should get a prompt for a certificate warning. There's the thumbprint. We can verify that if we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and name this DC1-VCSA. Uh, the password is going to be what we've been using, just like that. Click Next. Tiny deployment, so 2 CPUs, 10 gigs of RAM, 300 gigs of storage, up to 10 hosts, up to 100 VMs. We're going to put this on Data Store 2 and thin provision it. Click Next. This is important right here. This VM network, we need to put this in lab port group. Like super, super, super important. The FQDN is going to be DC1 BCSA, BCSA, I think is what I chose. BCSA.nsx.local. The IP address will be 172.31.1.10 slash 24 mask. 172.31.1.254 is our gateway. DNS server is 172.31.1.253 and we're in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and click on next and then finish. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull up this guy here and as you can see the install has happened, started. So we have import vapp here down at the bottom. The VCSA is a vapp and we are going to work on once the 
copy is complete, then the server will do its job by doing the, the boot up process. It happens automatically. So if I go back over to here, this is the actual flow that we want to pay attention to. I'm going to pause until this is completely uh, done to where we have something to interact with. Alright, so about five, maybe seven minutes have gone by for the appliance to come online and stuff like that. So there's a couple different ways that you can uh, complete the next step. You can either go to here and it'll walk you through through the web page or you can click on continue and it'll do the same thing. So if you accidentally close this out or something like that happens, then you can simply go to the web page and log in uh, to the console. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. So we're going to go ahead and enable SSH. We're going to synchronize times with the underlying ESXi host. Clicking next. For single sign-on, we are going to create a new SSO domain. Eventually I will be joining another vCenter instance to this. So we'll do what they refer to as enhanced linked mode. So I'm going to go ahead and type in vSphere.local. And it was actually kind of grayed out in the beginning. I typically will always roll with that. I've tried using other stuff and it doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and set the password. So we're going to be, our username is going to be administrator. We're going to be logging into the domain name of vSphere.local. So our login will be administrator at vSphere.local and whatever password we set. Click next. I'm not going to join the customer experience improvement program. It's a lab. I really don't care about telling you about VMR, what's going on. Now, once we do this, this is all the details we're going to have. So I'm going to go ahead and click on finish, and it's going to pop, pop up and say, you will not be able to pause or stop the installation from completing once it started. Click OK to continue or cancel to stop the install. OK. So it's going to go in and configure everything. It's going to turn on all the services that we need to have turned on and then we'll be in really good shape. So I'm going to pause the video while this happens and then I'll bring you guys back in when we can log in. Okay, so our deployment was successful. So if you click this link right here, it'll open up a Google tab to take you to v the vCenter server or you can click on close. They both take you to the same location. So I'm just gonna click on close. It'll automatically open up a tab for me. We're gonna click on advanced and proceed and then we're going to click on the HTML5 client. And then after a couple seconds, we'll be able to log in. This actually, So this first window is not too, too shabby. So we're going to come in here and type in administrator at vSphere.local. And then I'm going to hit the tab key and then type in the password we said during the install. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on login. This will take some time. Invalid credentials. Oh, it would help if I could spell it administrator correctly. Log in. This will take some time to log in. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video because it's going to go to a white screen here in a second. Okay, so we have the vCenter server pulled up and I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So there's not a whole lot here to show you other than the fact that this is just the initial UI. You have to literally build everything out from here. So the very first thing that we're going to need to add in here is a data center. So we're going to right click here and you don't really have many options. You can't add hosts, you can't add clusters. You have to build a data center first. So I'm just going to call this guy here DC1. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now once the data center has been added, you click on here and you can expand it. Nothing's underneath here. Nothing's been added. So you can right click here and you can add a whole bunch of different stuff. So vCenter server can hold several data centers and you can have multiple hosts located under each data center. So I'm going to right click here and you could add a host individually, you can add a cluster, you can add a folder that you can place uh, different attributes underneath for, um, for like inventory and stuff like that. You can create a distributed switch, you new, uh, a new virtual machine, deploy an OVF template, so on and so forth. There's a lot of options available to it. So that's basically what we're going to go through and build out. So as it sits right now, everything's been worked through. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to, in the upper right-hand corner, I like to go down here and go to switch theme and go to dark mode. That's just my personal preference when I'm working with instead of vCenter. 
there's some weirdness sometimes the 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 rendering that you get the the presentation of a web page gets a little goofy but for the most part it's pretty straightforward uh, there will be times when we get rid of this taskbar down here at the bottom but you can always bring that back up by going to the right hand corner here and bringing it up and stuff like that so in the next video we're going to go ahead and start building out the logic for vCenter so we'll start adding in the the clusters and talk through what we're going to do for that and then we'll talk about how adding host to clusters and adding the host themselves then we'll talk about the the build of everything else so adding ho clusters and hosts will be next and then we'll have the networking where we migrate we bring everything into vCenter we migrate away from the VSS switching that we created on host 1 and host 3 we migrate to a VDS we create more port groups and we talk through the details on that and then once we're at that point we'll be in a good spot to then start talking about NSXT because you have to build a data center out first then you can overlay NSXT on top of it so having a data center virtualization core competency and having not having that knowledge is really really important so we'll talk more about that in detail in the next video until next time guys thanks so much for stopping by and i'll catch all of you in the following video